But first, the two great Olympic rowers. Newton's own Jevy Stone just won a silver medal, it's right there by the way, in women's single skulls at the Rio Games, and oh yeah, in her spare time, she happens to be a doctor, it's great to meet you. We're also joined by an old friend of mine, Needham native Mary Mazio, she was on the women's Olympic rowing team in 92, also an award-winning documentary filmmaker. Her first project, brilliant, a hero for Daisy, came out in 99, was hailed as a landmark film by the New York Times, chronicled the story of the two-time Olympian, Chris Ernst, a Title IX pioneer who back in 76, led her rowing team at Yale University and protests that would ultimately pave the way for generations of women in sports to come. Mary, it's great to see you. Great to see you, my friend. So can you describe the second, when you know that you've won the medal, that yeah. split second, what does that feel like in your body? To con so I actually realized I was going to be on the podium maybe five, ten strokes to go in the race. Uh, because well, I had the Chinese woman who was in third wasn't going to catch you? I knew that she wasn't going to catch me, unless I really messed up. So but things were too like? good to... I mean, I was on top of the world. It's, I don't know. I, it was an experience like none other. And Being on the podium like, itself is something you dream about and don't really think that it's possible. And, and what's even that like when until, you're standing there and you're, they put the medal around your neck? What's that moment Even like? up until the moment when I walked on the podium, I really couldn't imagine it. With all the people on the stands and having completed such a great race, it, it's just exhilarating. You can see it in your face it's right so now. It's so exhilarating. So you envious? Or are you one of those people <laughs> oh who say... Oh, my God. I am part of team... Okay, let me just say, I am part of team Jevy. Are you? Are you? Well, yeah. we... So my husband was one of Jevy... I don't want to... No, but Jevy trained yeah. with Masters Men in Boston. My husband was one of them. I've read about them, yes. So my doubles partner and I, Cindy Mathis, both 92, would go out probably Barcelona, like... Barcelona, we should every say. Every other Saturday with Jevy. She would hand us our asses, and we <laughs> loved it because we felt like... It was so great to be working with Jevy and just part of her, like we were her entourage. So we were so proud. I mean, we were watching the race with like 30 people. Scr small children were trampled. I mean, we were <laughs> screaming at the top of our lungs. Are you kidding me? She has made us so proud. So you row on the Charles still. You train on the Charles. And I read after you won your medal, you said, I think it was the Shear Springer and the Gold yeah. Globe or somebody, that the Charles itself was in part why you were able to to come in second place there. Why? What did the I Charles have definitely, to do? So the water in Rio was not ideal most of the time, especially in the heats. It was far from ideal. In the final, the first thousand was nice. And then the, then for about 750 meters, a bit of a chop. And in Boston, it's never perfect water. Is you've that got really launch so it, wakes, you've got felt, wind, and it felt like being at home. The tech, needing the technical bit, needing the mental bit of having rough water definitely was to my advantage. What's the allure of, I mean, you're, I, I told you before I was in the rowing team in my college for two days, yeah. I was really a star. You see, it's like a different breed. What's the allure of this sport? I don't mean that in a critical yeah, we're, way. We're crazy, it's but, okay. But what it, I mean, in your case, it's genetic in part, is it mm -hmm. not? What's your Although my dad told me when I went to college to row, my dad didn't think that I would last four years. He really? bet my mom. He said, she's too sane. She's not crazy enough to row all four years. She went to the Olympics in 76. Mm -hmm. my dad he would have gone in 80 yep. if there wasn't a boycott. And did I read your great-great-uncle won a gold like yeah. in 1924 yeah. or something? So is that what brought you to this or was there something else? I definitely grew up around it and had a respect for my parents and their friends and the relationship they had towards the sport. I went ahead to the Charles every year yeah. and was on par with Wonderful, Halloween know, yeah. or Valentine's Day. Yeah. No, but even as like a five-year-old, oh, it was a I big see. celebration with all our family and friends. You just wander around. And then I started doing it because I was bad at field sports, pretty much. And I found that the teamwork was unlike any other sport that I'd been a part of. And that's what drew me to the sport originally. Was your was the 76 thing with Chris Ernst that you chronicled, I mean, the movie is just... Can you just say brilliant one more time? No, it is. It really is brilliant. <laughs> Thank it, you, it, my friend. Was that a turning point? I mean, obviously it was a turning point in terms of Title IX. Did it, it, was it a major milestone in terms of women in rowing, or was it more Title IX? It was both, right? Because athletic directors across the country st really sat up and said, this is what gender equity means. And so what was happening at Yale at the time in 1976 really reverberated not just for women's rowing, but for women's sports in general, right? And women's rowing has been the beneficiary, of course, because it's a great way to balance out big yeah. football teams, right? So we have now, generations later, athletes like yeah. Jevy that are just extraordinary. Well, so, not even like me, because I mean, I was exposed to it at high school, but yeah. on the Olympic team in Rio, half the people started in college, and they start from schools that have big football programs, Wisconsin, right. Washington, et cetera. You know, you, you've won, you're you a big time lawyer, and now you're a big time filmmaker, brilliant films, by the way. <laughs> I just want to be clear about that. Do you worry, do you ever say to yourself, this was so unbelievable, Am I ever going to feel that high again in my life? Is that? 
It happens I, a lot, I actually. I'm sorry. I'm no, it's fine, because I remember a few, week, a few years ago, in 2014, is that right? Yeah, the fall of 2014, I won Head of the Charles in the single and then won it in the eight with a group of international uh -huh. single scholars. And I went to my dad. I said, Dad, this is the best week of my life. <laughs> this is, I think this is the best week I'm ever going to have. And he said, that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> so do you worry about that now or just you luxuriate in the um, feeling? I think you have to just enjoy it as it comes and soak in the moment and appreciate You're it. You're a doctor. You didn't worry about the Zika thing at all? Not too much. I actually talked to one of our team doctors before I headed down. He said he hadn't even seen a mosquito in the week that he was there. I saw two or three. I don't didn't get a mosquito bite. I've had more mosquito bites since I've been back than I had down there. Glad to hear that. So Barcelona, you were in London in 2012, mm -hmm. plus uh, Rio. Yep. Uh, I heard from a source that you were a little angry that Marjorie Egan and I on the radio <laughs> were bad-mouthing the effort for, to bring the summer games here in 2024. Why was that a good idea, Jovi? I think Boston loves sports, from the pro sports down to the marathon and community kickball. And I think the community really would have joined together to celebrate sport in the way that London did. In London, the community, the volunteers, the mm -hmm. fans, everyone was so enthusiastic, and everyone was on this cloud nine the whole two weeks. It was, You're with it was an incredible experience. Absolutely, and I think the infrastructure that could have been created and housing for low-income, you know, well, citizens it would have been around UMass. It would have been the UMass Boston camera. Yeah, campus. Yeah. UMass right. Boston wants to be a residential campus and they would have made the village the campus. Right. I think there was, um, there were a lot of politics and behind the scenes that happened and I think it was a missed opportunity. You know, it's great to meet you. It's great to see you. Can you hold that thing up? Before yeah. you, can I Woo, touch it? Yeah, oh, you can wear oh, it. Can <laughs> put it on? Oh, well, no, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> so it's you're a two pleasure days to meet you. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. Thank you for Lots having me. All right, my friend. Mary, it's great, great to, to see you. See you.